All right, man, peace. So brothers, this is going to be another volume into the series, Do Black Boys Matter? And this edition will be starring a young man from Yonkers by the name of Denim Jones. He was recently shot right outside of his aunt's apartment complex at 2 a.m. in the morning. Now, this easily could have been another entry into the series, Black Man Protect Your Seed. But as I constantly state when I make these videos pertaining to many of the issues that are pervasive in the so-called black community, most of these themes interconnect. So at the end of the day, we all know that the so-called black man has to preside over his household. And the main way that we do that is showing great scruples in deciding who it is that we're going to procreate with that's extremely important because many of these females are only using you for your seed and once they become impregnated, they wanna cast you to the side, try to raise the child by themselves along with the state. And then when things start to go awry, they're gonna point the finger at you, so-called black man. Always remember that, especially to many of you younger brothers out there who are 17, 18 years old, who don't quite understand the real world yet because you have not been exposed to it yet. Right now is the time period where you're supposed to be trying to soak things in and get a greater understanding of the dynamics that you're going to encounter once you start to face the real world because everybody's not your friend. When you go to junior high school, high school, people are your quote unquote friends or your buddies. When you go out into the real world, people are opportunists. They want to see what they can get from you. And once they've gotten what they believe you're worth, they're going to cast you to the side. For the so-called black man, his main worth in this society is as an entertainer or for his seed, which is highly, highly valued. So once again, all of us as so-called black men have to make sure that we use discernment in deciding who we're going to give our seed to. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. The search is underway tonight for two gunmen wanted for shooting into a group of children in Yonkers. Right, children who were out in the middle of the street at 2 a.m. So there was clearly something very rotten in Denmark with that situation. 12-year-old boy was hit by a bullet, leaving him in serious condition. CBS 2's Rena Roy has the latest details. This is still a very active investigation. Yonkers police gathering evidence and scouring through surveillance video to try and track down those two suspects who sent that young boy to the hospital. The family of 12-year-old Denim Jones tells us he's on the road to recovery after being shot in the neck at the Yonkers apartments just before 2 a.m. Sunday. Neighbors heard gunshots, then ran outside, finding him lying on the ground. We were trying to get like, the police to hurry up and the ambulance to hurry up. Um, to come because he was almost going to pass out. He was really hurt. Police say the two gunmen drove up to the Highland Avenue building, got out, then fired one shot each into the crowd of kids. Stop the hanging out and stuff in front of the buildings. Right, but that's your job to preside over those children. Brothers, once again, the woman cannot control the child. That's a game for her to cash you to the side and see if she can be the sole source of influence over the children. Once they start to outgrow any form of influence that she has on them, then she wants to point all the blame at you. She's supposed to be the quote unquote victim's aunt. It was her job to make sure that he was not standing outside on the street at 2 a.m. It's very obvious to me, of course, they're not going to report this in the official story that he has some type of gang affiliation, gang ties or association with the wrong group. Or maybe he was just standing with the wrong group at the wrong moment and he was not quite aware of what he was doing by his associations. As we know, the scriptures tell us can two walk together unless they be in agreement. You are going to be the recipient of the destiny of those that you're confederate with. We all are. That's why we have to make sure that we know exactly who we're hanging out with, what they're into, what their motivations are, etc. It's very clear that young Mr. Denham Jones does not have anyone to lead him anywhere. I mean, no disrespect to this sister right here, but <laughs> that's what we're going to see. She has a tattoo right above her right titty. Brothers, I'm not trying to go off into a tangent or digress. But when you encounter these women who have these tats all across their breasts and things of that nature, that's not a mother. That's just a harlot. Okay? Especially, especially on certain body parts. I mean, give me a break. With the children and all of that. That's what they need to do. Stop all of that nonsense. With and of course, she wants to cast blame on the police when it's supposed to be the adults in the community that are guiding the children. These are not 17, 18, 19 year old young men. These are 11, 12, 13 year old boys who are standing out on the corner 
at two o'clock in the morning. You cannot blame the police for that. That is terrible parenting on your part. Or in the case of this woman, terrible supervision. Let me rewind this back just a little bit. Stop the hanging out and stuff in front of the buildings and stuff. With the Start supervising appropriately over the young children that you're supposed to be the steward over. And all of that. That's what they need to do. Stop all of that nonsense with these kids. We still don't know why Jones was outside in the middle of the night. His aunt tells us he doesn't live here, but frequently visits their family. She says the violence needs to stop. As usual with the liberal black woman, she's trying to pass the buck. Any form of accountability or culpability when it comes to what transpired here by saying that it's about the quote unquote violence as opposed to what she should have been doing. I suppose that no one asked her directly exactly why her nephew was out in the street at 2 a.m. Or if they did, they decided that they were not going to include it in the segment because they did not want to make her look bad. That's normally how it goes with many of these black matriarchal figures that they want to glorify. Once again, so-called black man, it's our job to make sure that our sons don't end up in these situations. I have very, very low to no expectations for the liberal black woman. She's too busy in her apartment watching one of these silly ass trashy reality shows like Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, whoever the hell these broads watch. Please end the building, everything. Everybody should do something about it. It's, it goes, it's ongoing throughout the whole town. Right, but now you're talking about the whole town. Why was your nephew out on the corner at 2 a.m. in the morning? We're talking about your nephew. We're not talking about the whole damn town. Let me rewind this back just a moment. I see brother this is my issue with so many of these liberal blacks who want to talk about police brutality all the time and how terrible the cops are the first entity that they want to deflect all responsibility to when it comes to the welfare of their children is the police force well do you believe that the police force is an entity that is oppressing you or should they raise your children or maybe it's neither one of course, there are issues with the police, and I'm sure that there are many liberal blacks who are going to listen to this video who are saying, what do you mean the police don't oppress the so-called black community? The main force, the main energy that is oppressing our people is their own stubbornness in turning back to the most high and the spirit of truth. That is how we're going to return back to our ruling class mentality so that we don't have to look to the so-called white man to police our own communities. The so-called black man has to take back over his household. That's the main thing. We cannot look to another race of men to preside over our children and expect to receive respect from our children. There was a situation that just happened a couple of days ago. A brother sent me the video where the trainer of Clarissa Shields, the female boxer who gets a lot of promotion from Showtime. She was at a weigh in and the trainer of her opponent got into a verbal altercation with Clarissa Shields sister, who was a dyke lesbian. Well, the trainer of the other fighter was an older black man by the name of Ali Bashir. And he started to tell Clarissa Shields' sister, who's a dyke lesbian, look, know your place, you're not a man. If you keep coming at me like that, I'm gonna put you in your place, so on and so forth. Of course, this brother's like 71 years old. He's from the old school. He's not going to allow a dyke lesbian to emasculate him. He sat down on the bench after the weigh-in. He was still hot. They cut the film at that point, and then the next portion of the film that they picked up this whole situation or narrative at, he was laid out on the floor bleeding, and there were a couple of drone, so-called thug Negroes, mama's boys, black matriarchal soldiers who were running out of the way because they had sucker punched the brother in the back of the head. These are the problems that we have in the so-called black community that are far bigger and far vaster than so-called police brutality. We have quote unquote so-called thugs who are venerators of the feminine principle with the same energy as actual thugs who worship Kali, the goddess of destruction, who are running around the so-called black community causing havoc and anarchy. And the reason why that's occurring and why that brother got laid out and in the comment section for that video, there were a bunch of so-called lame ass, low level mama's boy, black men or black males who were talking about how it was a good thing that that old man got laid out. And it's because the young men in the so-called black community are being raised without the understanding of how important it is to have a male patriarchal figure that you actually take orders and instruction from. 
Young black males are raised to buck up against any orders or instruction from older so-called black males. Why is that? It's because we continue to make the wrong decision in who we're going to procreate with and we're having children at the wrong time. We're having children during a time period where we cannot provide for them. And we have no knowledge on what to teach them and we're ill prepared on how to deal with these women. That's the reason. And those are the most important aspects of what's going on in the so-called black community that is leading to our self oppression. We're not supposed to be looking to the white man's police force to correct our problems. They're garbage collectors. That's all they are. That's why they're called police. They're meant to enforce policy. All right. So at the end of the day, that young man was not supposed to be out there on the corner at 2 a.m. It's our job to make sure that he's not out there on the corner at 2 a.m. And when I say our, I'm talking about his father. His father was supposed to preside over that situation. He's 12 years old. He caught a hot one and he probably was, quote unquote, in the wrong place at the wrong time, hanging out with the wrong crowd. As in, he was just making a very bad decision because he has no knowledge of what the hell he was doing. He was searching out male energy to surround himself with because he's probably not getting it in the home. Oh, it's also unclear why those two suspects would do this. The community hoping to see the gunmen taken off the streets. Why would you say that it's unclear why the quote unquote suspects would do this? It's very clear <laughs> that they sprayed at that crowd of kids because they believed that they were their enemies. Whether it's a gang situation or they were running off at the mouth or whatever it was. Just nigga nonsense. Hope they find the guy that did this, you know. She bold. She on TV showing her face talking about she hope they find the guys that did this. <laughs> it's not right for for this violence to keep going on, especially like in the community where everybody's supposed to be helping each other out. We are told the victim is in serious. Hey, at least she got courage. Good for her. It's stable condition and will have to go into surgery. In Yonkers, Rena Roy, CBS 2 News. But anyway, that's basically it on that, brothers. When I see situations like that, it always makes me harken back to the overall theme that we have to re-implement. That being the man, being the head of the household. And when you're dealing with a female who does not want to tolerate that, one of these modern-day super liberal black women, it's okay. Send her on her way. We cannot allow ourselves to get confounded or mesmerized by fat asses, tight coochies, and big titties anymore. Those are wonderful things, don't get it twisted. But they cannot be the be all end all because it leads to a lot of trouble down the line. And most of these females are community property at the end of the day. You can think that skidding up and abroad is gonna make her stay with you all you want. As a matter of fact, oftentimes it makes her leave you faster, okay? But anyway, peace.